Go. Here we go. Well, hello and welcome to the Photo Brigade podcast. I'm Robert Kaplan. Today I have my friend Ed Mulholland. Mulholland. So, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Thank good you. to see you. Um, Ed is a fantastic uh, sports photographer. You specialize more specifically in fights. I do. This is gonna, yes. yeah. This is gonna be a good one. And, and um, parental advisory: if you have small children watching, there are some graphic. Uh, there will be a few. There are a few bloody photos coming up from some boxing matches uh, that that and M MMA. MMA, yeah. MMA. You shoot is that UFC? UFC, Bellator, yeah, mixed martial arts. Mis mixed martial arts. So Ed is a uh, photographer. You're based in the New York area, but you live in northern New Jersey. Northern yeah, New Lakes. Jersey. Um, you've worked for all sorts of um, wonderful clients, including HBO, which we're going to talk about, which just just ended their boxing. Yeah, after 45 years. 45 years of coverage, they and you've been working. You out. had been working with them for. Uh, 12. For 12 years. Yeah, 12 years. And, and that sort of ended. So we're going to talk about that. Um, you also do a lot of NHL hockey and football and, and um, yeah. That's anything I can. Anything you can. Yeah. Whatever, whatever pays the bills, right? That's pretty much how this works, yeah. <laughs> I'll shoot your <laughs> wedding and your bar mitzvah. No, no weddings and no children. No is, children. Is no children I at all. stay out of. Uh, before we get started, I just want to say thank you to Adorama and the use of their event space as always. Um, also, thank you to Temba Bags and Canon Professional Services. You guys are the best. We love Canon, right? Yes, we do. Very good. Um, okay, Ed, so let's see here. I am trying to think when it was that we first met each other, and I'm and I'm thinking I don't know when it was like in person, but we've known each other through Sports Shooter, I think, forever. Yeah, I think it started through that, and then we ran into each other for the first time at a Photo Plus Expo. I think. It oh, was. okay, all right. Um, and got talking about sitting down for something years ago, and finally, it's finally it's yeah it's, with our schedules traveling and but you've been to like some that, other so. events that we've had here I have, yeah. and uh, i've seen you seen you out and about um so that's great and uh i'm gonna start maybe going through some of your oh someone's trying to call me I'm doing a podcast okay <laughs> um i want to start going through some of your photos here and this is like this is going to be all your fighting stuff so what i want to sure. talk about first is your sort of like foray into boxing and fighting like how did this become your thing uh well it's i i grew up a, a boxing fan so i i started i would you know pester my mom and dad constantly when i was younger and it'd be like oh there's fights on tonight there's fights on hbo and mm -hmm. you know we had hbo on the on the tv downstairs and i'd run in and they'd be like you know oh the fights are on tonight can i watch the fights and you know they'd put up with it and uh yeah so i i uh boxing it was it was more of I was a fan of the sport and uh, when I got into this whole photography thing because I did not go to school for photography um, it was a hobby mm -hmm. um, I was working in in uh, pharmaceuticals and I was a sales rep and um, I uh, oh, now you're getting look, a call now I'm getting it this is your and, reminder uh, to go live and it wasn't my mom uh. um, so it was uh, kind of I went to a fight with my brother we had gotten tickets to a fight. I went as a fan, uh -huh. took cameras along. It was a hobby. My brother still calls me a hobbyist. <laughs> um, and I took some photos from the crowd and I sent them into a boxing website that uh -huh. I, I followed. And um, they called me up and were like, hey, we like the images. And uh, would you ever consider shooting a fight? And yeah, OK. And uh, so two weeks later, I get a phone call and I'm in Reading, Pennsylvania for a a uh, Don King promoted uh -huh. fight and I'm on the ring apron for very little money and shooting this fight and uh, I, interestingly enough I got my first, first Sports Illustrated photo uh -huh. from that fight and it was uh, that's kind of how it started and I started working for these these websites and magazines and doing it on the side mm -hmm. and what were you doing it on the side, what were you doing other than I was that? a sales rep for a pharmaceutical company. Okay. And uh, that sounds like you could make some money. Suit, there. You can. <laughs> and a suit and tie, and that's really just not me at all. Uh -huh. um, and I did that, I did both for years uh, up until, I mean, I started doing stuff for HBO and um, I did a 
video game cover for electronic arts and I was doing all this stuff on the side and kind of killing myself with both jobs and my wife was finally like hey maybe you should you know give this photography thing a uh-huh. a legit shot sure and, but it was like walk away from this money yeah and take a shot on you know a freelance you know but it's gig. something that you love but doing. I loved it and that was her that was her thing it was I'd come home and I'd be exhausted and then I'd be and then I you know I started with I probably was photographing fights for about three years maybe uh-huh. and I got a call on a Wednesday afternoon um, at my quote-unquote real job at the time and um, uh-huh. it was from HBO and they were like hey can you be in Atlantic City on Friday we want to hire you for for a fight uh-huh. and um, yeah so at that point I was like absolutely and then they offered me a contract and uh, I started flying around the world doing HBO fights and at that point my wife was like look it's you're killing yourself one or the other yeah why don't you take the chance and um, so I did and I just left and it's, and so so then business wise was this contract something that just sort of uh, floated you and, and 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 covered everything and then everything else was gravy like how to as, like, as far as the HBO side of things? Yeah, or? yeah. Like, I mean, how much freelance did you do around that contract, I guess, I, is I, what I'm asking. I took, I did a fair amount, but it was, uh, you know, I started doing some stuff for Getty, and I started doing some stuff for USA Today, and um, I, I... How did up, you get your name out to them? Uh, you know, the weird thing is, it was, it's it's strange. Like, I get asked that all the time. Like, hey, how do I get started? And what do I put in front of editors? And and things like that and it was like I kind of started on my own and I really just started submitting and it's a lot different now but I started submitting to magazines so I ring magazine and and boxing news and all these like so you just like magazines email the editors and say here's some photos yeah check them I out. mean I would I would you know send some some prints or I you know in the beginning I sent some prints and then I started emailing stuff and they would get back to me like hey we're gonna use this image and this image and this image and uh-huh. you know check would arrive with you know their space rates and whatnot and so i started picking up money on the side um submitting to these magazines Uh and when hbo called interestingly enough what they had said and uh they found me through uh my work in ring magazine Uh uh-huh so i started uh, i guess getting my name out in these magazines the editors on the boxing side of things were looking at that and Uh You know, HBO offered me this this shoot, and I took it. And then they offered me like a three month contract, and uh, I was kind of like, "Wow, this is great!" I, I'm I'm in Germany doing a fight, and then I'm in Vegas doing a fight, and I'm like, yeah. this, "People are paying me for this. This is great!" And <laughs> um, and it, it it just took off from there. And at the end of three months, they offered me one of their shows, um, Boxing After Dark. So I worked on that series, and then eventually, in the last few years of that contract, I took over all the boxing stuff. Nice. And, um, it worked and, out. And then you shoot, well. shoot, like I said, MMA. Yeah, that's UFC. That's actually or UFC. That's a very young Conor McGregor. Yeah, I was gonna say this. Yeah, is, he has a, less tattoos. It yeah, looks like. very few tattoos. Um, I think that was in Boston uh-huh. um, on his way up to what he is now. And he and, actually, um, so he ended up boxing. What's his face? The, uh, Floyd Mayweather. Were you at that yeah, one? Yeah, I was not. Not at that one. I was not. Yeah, <laughs> it was kind of funny, huh? Yeah. So yeah, you got all these. And nice that's a, that's an older Conor. That was uh, at Madison Square Garden. That's uh, cool. A couple years ago, when he won a second. Did you set title. up a flash, or was that just some TV light or something? That is a TV light. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, use the TV. That lights. is a TV light. Uh, and when TV cameras come into the dressing rooms, uh, you can do some pretty interesting stuff. Yeah. Well, already online, Bryant Wilson says Ed is my hero. <laughs> Alexis Quaresma says, "Yo, what's up?" Alexis is great. <laughs> He's great. Yeah, I met Alexis uh, years ago. We had lunch together out in LA. Yeah. He uh, drove down because he was getting into boxing. Oh yeah, that and, was great. Uh, and he he stops by often. We've had him on here. Yeah. He's a nice guy. He I actually uh, he stops by. He has stopped by HBO a bunch, and um, I told my editors there his I mean his lighting and his portraiture and uh, it's yeah. just you know well beyond anything I could ever yeah, do. Yeah. I actually send, I, I'll do something and I'll send it to him and be like, hey, you want to touch this can up for me? Can you critique? Yeah. And, and, like, uh, what the, yeah. yeah. Well, um, so that's another question. So we were talking just before this about you were looking into some new lights or you're looking at modifiers or something. You just got some, yeah, some new fancy. Picked up the B10s. The and, new pro photos, which are really great. I have yeah, the B10s fantastic. as well. Um, do you do much lighting these days? I do some. Um, because obviously all these are natural light. Yeah, the most part. it's not um, it's not an area of expertise at all. Um, mm-hmm. But we do some fighter portraits. We need some stuff for artwork, posters, things like that. So I will do it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it's something I, I want to get into more. So I'll probably be calling Alexis and being like, hey, listen. Yeah, it's uh, that's a remote shop. Yeah, so it's so a nice segue. Uh, Gary Miller just wrote and says, as a former ESPN.com editor, Ed is awesome, uh, wonderful ring eye, but uh, also watches the edges of an event. As you can see here, he's, you're keeping, yeah, keeping that's, an eye out for something that's special. A, that's a, Are you in this photo? I am somewhere somewhere oh right there uh, i see a red hat there's the red hat yeah, red yeah hat. i'm right right over corner there. <laughs> um yeah this is this is um it gets mounted in the lighting truss uh-huh so you have to set this up way in advance yeah it depends on the fight if it's a if it's a really really big event we might set them up on thursday um, and how do you get up there you uh you can attach it to the truss when the truss is on the ground but, but you then, won't know how to aim it. no it gets raised up and once it gets raised up you go up in a bucket or, oh, okay. or a lift and, and you, you get up there and you focus and then it do you and, have like it hooked to power up there uh you can we don't um i just have a uh a, pow- a switch so when you hit your pocket wizard it, it wakes the wakes camera it up. up that's right it goes to yeah sleep. so okay. it'll go to sleep and it's fine battery these cameras wise. last quite a while these they days. do now yeah they yeah. used to not I no remember back like an original days. 1d yeah you, yeah yeah you'd be kind of what do you shoot with now uh 1dx mark twos 1dx mark twos so you yeah. shoot with the big stuff yeah this is a cool portrait yeah that's a one light in a gym down in philly nice um bernard hopkins nice nice Ooh, nice yeah i've done a lot of his fights great guy do you have um, like any particular like favorite events that you've shot? Like like the most me- what are the most memorable? Are they the ones that are the <sighs> biggest ones that like everyone watches, or are they the smaller the smaller type? You know, it's 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 funny. I it, you know picking stuff out for this, I I got back and I'm like, wow, I don't remember shooting this. I don't remember. I you mean, know, imagine you do so you many. See, you see so many like perfect yeah. punch faces. I mean, there's big ones. I mean, like. Ronda, Ra- when you shoot with a big athlete, it's always, you know, it's always cool. Um, she was great. This was in a tent on a beach in Rio de Janeiro. Oh, you wouldn't um, have any idea. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I used to do, like, when I got started, I'd do these little fights, and you'd be in a ballroom with a chandelier, like, over the ring, and the lighting was awful. And, I mean, I haven't done one of those in years. So mm-hmm. you kind of miss it a little bit because you do these big events. But, um yeah, what about I, shooting I mean, through these fences? Like, that, I've always wondered, can you fit a lens through there? Or is no, it, you're, it, you're not. You're probably about three feet off the fence. Uh-huh. So, whereas when I'm shooting boxing, I, I mean, I like to shoot generally tight. That's on a 70 to 200. Um, I probably shoot 95% of my stuff cage side mm-hmm. with a 70 to 200. Mm-hmm. Whereas boxing, I shoot a lot more with a 24 to 70. Mm. Because a 24 to 70... Well, it's, a bigger, cage, it's a bigger... It, it is a bit it is a little bit bigger i don't know with, i guess with a with a cage you know if you're on a 24 to 70 at even 70 you're going to see the cage you, yeah you're just your depths yeah completely different than on a 70 to 200 so with a 70 to 200 if they're out in the middle of the octagon the fence tends to blend you know right because you're at i mean a lot of the time you're at two eight right you know maybe three five right i mean cameras tell you, you can push the you know iso you know, so high yeah. that you, when, know, you can shoot. When them. you're shooting, let's say for a client like HBO, are do they ask you for specific, like, hey, get as much branding in the background? You and try like, to. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, you, you shoot for your client. We're not shooting. You're not shooting editorially. You're shooting for this corporate client. And, Correct. And obviously, um, yeah. So, like, a lot of times, and you kind of i mean it depends where the branding is but yes you want to get the hbo in there you want to get the logos in there Mm -hmm. um for instance on this you know this is with a 16 to 35 Mm -hmm. and i will probably tell you that i'm not even looking through the lens just kind of hanging it out there i'm out underneath the rope kind of holding it out there and yeah yeah sort of a because then you can get a lower hail mary yeah if you see a shot down that low coming up it's generally yeah um and you got to be careful because you know if you go in a little too far you could you could screw something up pretty bad i mean Um, for them too yeah there are um also this was a great event yeah so what's this at army Um, yeah it was on an army base in kentucky uh and um i think it was kentucky and uh uh, yeah it was called fight for the troops Mm. and the ufc put it on and no ticket sales it was just on the army base and all the soldiers were invited and they filled out the crowd and we were in a we were in a, a a hangar on a on a on a, on a runway, a military oh, cool. runway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great event. That's really cool. Yeah. So um, a lot of these photos, like I said, you are, you've gotten it down where you get those action shots. And it's hard. I mean, I imagine that you're shooting these things. When you someone punches you that hard to get it 
like actually completely sharp. Yeah. I mean, obviously he's sharp, but like his face right. is moving at like 130 miles an hour. You know, here. it's it, it's interesting. <laughs> like nowadays, though, with the cameras today. Uh -huh. So like on the I'm, on the Mark II, I could shoot this at yeah, twelve fiftieth of a second, or uh -huh. you know, um, sixteen hundredth of a second, because you can push the ISO, you know, five thousand uh -huh. and there's no grain it looks right. good it looks clean whereas like when i started i'm pulling out stuff 400th of a second um so you had like this was probably maybe 500th of a second right so you have more of the face kind of right kind of going and now it's a lot easier to just you can shoot at so much yeah. higher shutter it's so speed funny going it. back and i kind of like that look a little better yeah it's kind of like uh, yeah um it's kind of uh, crazy going through your archives, looking at old generations of digital photos and even in film, and you're just, just noticing that quality difference that you thought looked amazing yes. back then, and you're like, holy cow. Yeah. I, and, and it's like old toning, and they're like, oh man, I've gotten so much better at toning photos and I, <laughs> stuff I like that. I was pulling stuff, and I'm like, man, was I, was it the equipment or was I really bad? My or, friend, you know, I posted an old photo a long time, or on Facebook, and. My, my friends, one of my friends comments, he goes, wow, that's uh, you should check your white balance. And I was like, you know that this is a 10 year old photo. It yellows with age. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's another remote. Um, that's kind of what you're going for on a remote. You want to knock down. Right. Um, that's Manny Pacquiao. Nice. Um, you know, who knocked uh, Miguel Cotto down. And uh, sorry for showing that for Miguel. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, um, Wow. Yeah, UFC. So, oh, there's some nice Yeah, lighting. actually, Alexis toned, toned that and did some touch-ups <laughs> on that for me, and that was a cover of Ring Magazine. Oh, nice. Yeah. And that was also, I want to say, was a, it might have been the same day as that other one the with the, the speed bag. Oh, yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Um, and I think that was a Very light. nice. Yeah. So, okay, so the question I was going to ask earlier is these a lot of these photos where there's just the sweat spatter and blood spatter, I, and I took a couple out because it's a little too graphic, I think, for the store. But my question to you is, is how covered in stuff do you get and body uh, fluids do you, you get at the you end? You can. There's been a couple. There was a, a UFC fight a month and a half ago or so. <laughs> Have you had to go to the hospital for antibiotics it, after one? You can get it. You know, it was funny because I started wearing – a baseball hat because of that uh -huh. so if i have the baseball hat and the camera's up to my face it doesn't necessarily it can't get on me as oh, much I see. and um yeah i wore a white shirt to the first fight I ever shot is that why you never wore the, ever the hat again today so i don't spin on you yeah i i wear the <laughs> hat because people just expect me to wear the Rutgers yeah. hat now so um yeah so i wore it initially to kind of protect myself from fluids flying around <laughs> and uh then people start saying oh you should always wear the Rutgers hat and it became your your trademark. Yeah, that's where huh? I graduated from, and so. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So Rutgers, but you yeah. you graduated with what kind of degree? Economics. Economics degree. Yeah. How? Which I guess helps me on the business side of things, and um, you know helps me kind of manage what's going on. And you know, as a free well, as a freelancer, I mean, my wife's an accountant too. So. Oh, well, that helps. Um, yeah. Can she do my does. taxes? Thank you. She does not do taxes. Yeah, ironically, I do our taxes, which is kind of weird. But, what? Yeah. But she double checks it, I'm sure. She double checks everything. Yeah. Yeah. As she should. Um, well, that's good. So uh, an economics uh, major yeah. ending up in uh, boxing, you know, fight photography. Yeah. You never know where you're going to end Crazy up. Crazy trip. Yeah. 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 And, um, okay, so as you were saying, uh, HBO ended their boxing uh, situation. And that affected you in a big way it because did. you lost a big client. Because it was my main client. Um, yeah, so when when I started doing this, it, it was interesting. So I got the, I, got, I had a bunch of things happen kind of at the same time. I um, had won a photo of the year award from the Boxing Writers Association. Mm -hmm. And then oh, Electronic Arts, thank you. <laughs> Electronic Arts uh -huh. had contacted me for the cover of a video game. Uh -huh. And then HBO called me and that all started everything. And that kind of developed into, I ended up working with ESPN alongside of HBO for I guess I was doing stuff for ESPN for almost nine years. Yeah. Mostly UFC stuff. Uh -huh. And then that kind of went, they changed some editors, they changed some things, and that kind of went to the wayside. Mm -hmm. And uh, But at the same time, I kind of went to HBO almost full time. So mm -hmm. I was doing all their fights. And then last, oh, maybe October, mm -hmm. uh, we got a phone call. The New York Times had broken a story that HBO was going to get out of the boxing business after 45 years. Mm -hmm. And so we got this preemptive phone call 
probably about an hour before the New York Times broke the story. <laughs> yeah. And it was kind of like, hey, guess what? December 8th is your last fight. Yeah, congratulations. We're not doing it anymore. Yeah. Um, now, I just still will probably end up doing some stuff for them. I, I did the Hard Knocks football series for them. Yeah, they've got other things yeah, that they're probably so, going to do. I mean, I will there. probably do some stuff Does for them Does that mean that like all the editors that you worked with are gone now? Or no, they the just... photo department, the, all the editors are still, they're still there because they handle all the original programming. They handle... You know any right. documentary stuff? They're they're creating all that stuff constantly. Yeah. So yeah, everyone is. Have you ever thought about, or or inquired about, or even have any desire to do any kind of like, like non sports like set type stuff? Is that because obviously HBO makes content? Yeah, you know. Okay, first of all, sorry, sorry. This photo is really cool. Yeah, the, he. Uh, that's the portraits you saw before of Bernard Hopkins. That's Bernard Hopkins. This was in. It was either Atlantic City or Philadelphia, and he came into the ring, and he had a black veil on, uh-huh. and it just, yeah, and the hood was so far forward. Oh, so he had something he on had underneath He had a black that. veil. I was going to say, that is yeah. like some serious uh, darkness And under it there. just, yeah, that's... That's creepy. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it, it turned into a But a then really these nice damn TV cameras always. get right up in their face. Always. And, and, and that is always a, a problem every sport, basically. Every sport. I, I mean, mean, and it's gotten worse and worse. Yeah. Um, it's because I, they pay the bills. They do, and as... as uh, you know what and there you go again you you get right and you get it as a viewer sitting at home it's fantastic you have all these tv angles and you get all this insight into the game that you didn't get you know watching when you were growing up and yeah. you know it was uh it might have been is it i, I want to say it was uh, neil lifer did this thing for sports illustrated where uh-huh. they sent him back around to these events that he had shot oh okay and like he had a picture from like a football stadium and it, at the Super Bowl, and it was like the referees and two players on the field flipping the coin. Yeah. And then you know when he did this last one, which was a few years back, was like you know sixty people around the coin toss. Right. And it's changed, but you can no longer get, you can't get those photos anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just so many things that have changed. Yeah. You know, and you know, like his shot, the boxing shot with, you know, Ali over Liston and you right. know, staying there and there's this haze around it and all it's, you know, that like beautiful haze that. Kind so of is goes, he like, is, is that's he like, like cigar smoke and things right. like that oh, that you days. don't. Right. I mean, he's got like the best, like, I mean, I know there's tons of other photographers, but that one shot. Yeah. I mean, is it, the it, most, would you say that's the most iconic? It, I would think so. Well then, and then there's the remote one. The too, remote one of, yeah, Ali with, with Cleveland Williams in Just the like middle of the ring. And yeah. I mean, I, I've met yeah. Neil a couple of times. I, I don't really know him um, personally we, that well. We've had him on the podcast. Yeah, have you? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I met him. Uh, first time I met him is Washington, D.C., uh-huh. and it was Mike Tyson's last fight. Uh-huh. And I had been sent down there, and I grew up watching Tyson. I was like, there was two fights. There was a fight at the Garden that weekend. There was this Tyson fight in D.C., and uh-huh. they called me up, and they're like, hey, can you do this Garden fight? And I'm like, listen, I really want to go to D.C. because I want to shoot Mike Tyson. I never had, yeah, yeah, and I yeah. grew up watching him. And uh, I get down there, and you know, when you walk into a fight, you're, they label the ring, so you're, you're, your you're name's your on the spot, ring, and that's yeah. your spot. And uh, you're kind of at the luck of the draw of where stuff happens in the ring. But so I look, and next to me is you know Neil's name on the ring, and I'm like, oh crap, oh cool, yeah. like this will be awesome. You know? <laughs> I get a tap on the shoulder, and it was like, hey kid, can you do me a favor? And he hands me a camera. He hands me his camera, and he's like, can you take a picture of me? And I'm like, absolutely. Sure. And I'm following him around the ring. And it, I took a picture of him and Muhammad Ali together. Oh, wow. And uh, I hope it came out. I never saw it or yeah. anything. But, yeah, it was that's my, my one story with, yeah. with Neil. But, that's yeah. really cool. But that photo, I mean, I think the – I believe it's Cleveland Williams and the center of the ring is just kind of laid out. Completely laid out, yeah. And it's, you know, perfect. And so, like, today, if you had that remote a lot of times, if it's a knockout like that, you know, kind of the end of the fight type knockout, the cameras are in the ring so quick that it's never a clean image like that. Right. You know, it's and also like, the, the the thingamajig is completely uh, the, the mat is completely covered in ads now, right? It's covered in ads. You have um, they have these cameras now. It's like this like it's it's a remote that they control with a joystick and it literally flies Oh, it's wow. mounted yeah, yeah, yeah. on four like corners. Like in a football game. They... It's the same kind of principle as the football game, the, the sky cam that sky comes cam. over. Yeah. Um, but this is attached to the four corners, yeah. and it flies over the ring. So now you have a chance of, mm-hmm. which is why the remotes I bring out a little bit yeah. to come in at an angle so it doesn't. It's good to have a different thing. Different plus things, the too. giant scoreboards now in oh, arenas yeah. and stuff. There's, there's really no place to go. Like I would say that that was probably done 
you know, his shot was probably done from the catwalk yeah. at the top of the arena coming down, whereas... Before they had those things in the middle. We the, can't do yeah. a catwalk remote. I mean, you do it hockey because you have an angle into the net, right. but to do and something... And we'll get into some of those hockey shots You soon. know, to do something directly over a ring anymore, you can't because yeah. you have these big, you know, jumbotrons yeah. and everything over a ring. So I want to show some of your published work here from some of this boxing. This is this is cool. You had re referred to, I think, this, this yeah. photo. Um, was this your... your only one that's been on a game like yeah this? That's yeah cool. it was um do they reach out to you or is yeah it they like called me um just i i got a phone call and it was you know hey we found this image of yours and we want to license it you know do you own it and i did mm -hmm. um and you know they had signed deals with the fighters and um they had apparently sent the two fighters and um it's uh, mickey ward and arturo gatti and th those fights were incredible they fought three times or uh, um and i've done so much stuff with those three fights like i've probably licensed more images from those fights which shows how t-shirts oh t-shirts nice um yeah. all kinds of stuff you know companies have done t-shirts around them and everything from those three fights and wow and it shows how important it is to keep your copyright it is um you don't always have a choice right i mean i would imagine um, hbo as a my, contract my hbo i have a contract you know work for hire type yeah. of deal and they own that stuff um they're pretty good about letting me um i can use it to you know promote, promote my work yeah. and things like that or um but yeah i mean yeah you know that would have been a very large payday that you miss out of if you don't own your copyright. right right hbo um, gets it adds right. it to their coffers uh, absolutely <laughs> and uh yeah they contacted me and um normally they don't put action shots on covers of video games there i was i was actually thinking in. was was there any like removal of blood in this because there was wanted, not because um, i was thinking they have to choose something that's not too graphic they do but, right I, I, you know but they normally bring the athlete in and they do a big shoot around the athlete All and right. they did apparently with with these two and um they became really they fought three times became really really good friends like best friends and uh they had brought them into chicago apparently and they had a little fun on the side and i guess the portraits didn't come out exactly how they wanted right. it and um, when the art director called me up, they were like, we were looking for an image and someone in the meeting was like, hey, why don't we take a look at this? And they went down to the guy's office and he had this photo, a 16 by 20 hanging in his office. Uh -huh. And that's how they, they took it down and they opened it up. And on the back of it, it said like Costco. It was like printed at Costco. Uh -huh. And I guess the guy was friends with, with Arturo and he had sent copies of a print that I had given nice. him out. So yeah, technically he, you know, bootlegged my work Infringed. and sent it around. Yes, all over. <laughs> but it my, worked out. In the, and it worked out great in the and end. And I was going to say, yeah. that's kind of funny because that's how sometimes you end up, um, you know, making prints for people. They see it on the walls and it turns into another thing. So that's a good uh, promotional type thing. Yeah. I mean, you can't really be upset with that one. So, and then you have a lot of like uh, boxing news covers and I've, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not a subscriber to, I'm not a big boxing guy, but this is one of the big boxing. Yeah. They're, they're in, they're in the UK. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I haven't had the cover of a magazine for mm -hmm. years because, um, with HBO, you know, HBO owned my work and they used it. That's an HBO series. Uh -huh. Um, you know, so I hadn't been doing any cover work and now that I've left HBO and signed on. That's the that same photo, right? That's the same exact photo. Huh. Yeah. For a book cover. Yeah. Um, you know, but now that I, I've, I'm with Matchroom Boxing now and my stuff goes out editorially. Okay. So you're now with, uh, uh, Matchroom Boxing. They're a, um, promoter that started in, in the UK. They're massive. I mean, they're doing stadium shows uh -huh. in the UK. They do, they're doing shows at Wembley stadium with, you know, 90,000 fans. Oh, wow. Um, uh, it's crazy how big they are and uh, so now they're coming over to the US and um, I did a shoot for them and they asked me to recommend a photographer and I was kind of like hey, hello how about me yeah well, um, and it worked out perfectly I, I ended up joining them probably about two months before HBO announced that they were getting out oh so, so it was a good just really I would have been timing. doing kind of juggling both but yeah yeah that's it, great it works out well so i'm doing all their fights which is fantastic awesome um so i also want to get into uh some of your um other types of photos and one of your big ones is nhl yeah. and i start with this one because yeah because why not? it's a good segue sure even though you're at a hockey game they they also have their fights as well and yeah they bring that so it's like if you you show up at a hockey game like oh well the big fights photographers here here it goes well. so let's hope for a fight yeah um yeah that's i mean yeah that's 
probably the best fight photo I have as I mean, far as right. hockey goes. It's right right in the corner. It's shot with a I want to say it's a fisheye. Um, I use the fisheye a, a lot on the glass. Yeah, there's a there's a cool couple. And so you were shooting. Yeah, that's also the fisheye. So you, were you shooting? This one looks like you were shooting through the hole, right? Yes. So so sometimes you're shooting through a hole. Oh, you can see a hole on the right here. Yeah, that's um, there's um, right behind the guy in white. Yeah. So depending on the arena, the holes are set up and. Um, I've shot some hockey arenas, games. Different arenas have different spots. And one time I uh, had a h lens hood on for some stupid reason, sticking it out, and then it someone knocked it and it went on the floor and they had to like give it to me. Yeah, I was they, like, oh yeah. no, I know that's I like the that one guy. thing you never want. You never want to get in the middle of an event. And yeah, yeah, it's. Um, I mean, I've seen lenses hit. I have not had a lens hit yet. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, in twelve years. Um, my mom says impressive online, even though she's sitting right in front of us. She's sitting right there. I should have brought my mom along. She's going to be like, well, you didn't tell me. Yeah. Um, that's a remote. And that's from the catwalk. So, like, you know, the nets aren't in the center of the ice, so you can get away with doing it. It's the only you just kind of make really it a little it. wide so that you can get yeah, something Yeah, I mean, that's a prop. It and, you so know. Um, <clears throat> when you're shooting these shots, do you have, like, a pocket wizard on your hot shoe and you're just – yeah, it's taking those so shots it's firing. At the same time. Yeah, so half the photos on there are just a goalie standing on the other. Yeah, end. yeah, 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 yeah. You okay, know? gotcha. Yeah. I haven't done a remote uh, camera in a long time, but I used to do it for. <laughs> I haven't done a hockey one in a while, and yeah. I, I need to. If anybody's watching, that's curious about those holes, you can see in the background of this photo in the glass top. Yeah, you can see the holes that they shoot through. So, um, and these shots are really hard just to get the puck in it. it it's it's hard because it's it's um. It, it happens, I mean, the game moves so fast and the puck yeah. is moving so quickly. And so you, you tend to, you know, you shoot a player as they're coming down ice and when they enter the zone, it's almost like you kind of give up on the action there and move to the net right. because that's, you know, ultimately that's where the, the main payoff is, is going to be. Uh -huh. um, but it, yeah, I mean, these are all from the a photo hall. And, it seems uh, that you um, shoot a lot of the devils. I do because you are from primarily. Jersey. Primarily, yeah, that's kind of my assignment for USA Today. Is I do the Devils, and um, it's rare I get out. Uh, occasionally, Rangers games. Um, I shot a couple Devils games, maybe one or two for the New York Times back when I used to shoot sports like years ago, um, and it was during a play. There was a playoff game happening, and I remember I took a, a Polaroid, an actual Polaroid camera, and went around and took portraits of outside before the event of everybody dressed up for it was rangers devils that's why i shot it so i i uh, ended up doing a portrait series for the new york times and they ended up running scans of these portraits because i let them write you know uh, go double you know it's funny you mentioned i'm actually doing a polaroid oh uh, well fuji the fuji instax, fuji instax yeah. so i'm actually doing this fuji instax series of fighter portraits oh. um and so every fight week we go in i'm doing these portraits and we have the fighter sign them and we do two yeah. and we just take two and you know you can't focus these things or anything you just kind of yeah you, just you take, take it. it and whatever you get you get so we do two we have the fighter sign both and then we put it on twitter under nice. matchroom boxing's twitter nice. account and so if we get 10 fighters for the week we tweet it out people retweet it and then we mail them off to whoever that's wins. cool and then we're building this series that's really cool yeah i've done that at a couple of portrait shoots just brought just bang off a few yeah and you can also take you can also do double exposures on those. i did i did one of the fighters i had her i had her look left and then i had her look right and we did a double exposure and like and it's just kind of her head looking both ways on her on her body and then and the it, editors are like oh wow that's great you did something different you know and it's it's fun this photo really gives you an idea of the whole um, yeah. This is the the fisheye lens. It looks like almost a, what uh, eight that's, millimeter. That's yeah. Probably. I mean something very very yeah, wide. Eleven maybe. It's a little. I mean an eight would give us a full circle. Yeah. So a little cut, but yeah, it's um, that's like almost right up against it. And, and that's it, one of the things I'm curious, like the use of it. You don't want to use these too often because no, it's gimmicky. It, it it's uh. But then you get some really interesting shots like that when you when you nail it. It's hit or miss like. It, it completely is. I use it for when guys are kind of crashing into the boards. Uh -huh. um, boxing, I'll use it if I need, like you kind of want to go up top and do a wide of the whole thing. It's a cool look. Or um, if they're right on the ropes, you can kind of stick that in a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. and get away with it and get an, a neat shot. Right. Um, but I mainly use it inside the ring right. because TV cameras, you mentioned cameras everywhere, TV cameras everywhere. Right. They get so close yeah. to the action that I They'll can fill kinda, up half your frame or right, something. Right, so I can kind of drop the fisheye in and still get it. Right. But you just have to be careful with it because you can make a fighter's legs look like, you know, this big. <laughs> like and they're this, tiny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you prefer, I mean, if you could choose between boxing and hockey, is it, is it boxing for sure? I mean, fights 
was it fights for sure? Or do you love hockey as well? I, I probably fights. Yeah. Um, I get asked all the time, and it's it's um, I, yeah, I'm a, I, I like. I mean, I I enjoy. I pretty much enjoy anything I'm shooting at the mm -hmm. at the time. I mean, I do what a usually, lot of hockey. Which, what's usually more time? It takes more time to do a hockey game, probably. Or no, it takes more time to do fights because I mean, because it's you not know, just one match. It's not one fight. There, we might have day. ten fights, and that's the thing you forget is like you watch on TV yeah. the one match, and it could be just one round. If it could be right. Out. But you're there shooting. The, we're the doing 10. dressing rooms. We're doing you know behind the scenes stuff. This you, I never get to do this with hockey. Uh -huh. um, well, not you know, ever. Uh, well, I got to do this once ever with hockey because yeah. this was for HBO. Oh, I see. Um, so this was for the 24-7 road to the Winter Classic, and the Rangers were in it. And so this was a lot of the – we did a lot of behind-the-scenes um, work right. with with the players getting ready for games sure. and things like that. And they were, they were great. Nice. I mean, it's, it's – um, you know, the athletes are great. I mean, they're, they're generally – and then getting a really cool venue, you have to show the venue as yeah. well. So it's not often you have a hockey game at, at Yankee, Yankee Stadium. Stadium. Was that I a pretty know. cool event? Or it was. It was uh, like part of the NHL Stadium and series. And good lighting too, right? right? Well, this was interesting. It, so the Rangers-Devils game, it, um, the I think this was the game that it got delayed mm -hmm. because of sun glare on the ice. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, and then it immediately got overcast and really cold. And then it started snowing. Oh, man. And then in the third period, the sun came out with these beautiful clouds. Oh. So you had, like, everything kind of going on. That's and, cool. Uh, yeah, so it was... Everything it, but the rainbow. Really heavy snow. Yeah. That would have been perfect. Yeah. Um, really heavy snow in the second period. And then third period, it was like it warmed up and the sun came out. And That's cool. Yeah. Pretty wild. Oh, and, here's a, and, yeah, I think that night, was nighttime the show. next day or two days later. Oh, I see. Uh, they did a few games. Yeah, this was the matches. Rangers. The Rangers were in both. They yeah. played the Devils one one day and the yeah. Islanders the next, and yeah, that was my first Stanley Cup Finals. Were you on carpet or did you slip and fall? No, I didn't slip and fall, but I was on the ice. Uh, you start on the carpet and yeah. then they kind of release you, and there's oh, this like yeah. dash. And when when Jonathan Taves had grabbed the cup from the commissioner, he took it and he raised it, but he turned sideways. Oh no! So you couldn't yeah. see his face. Yeah. So I spent the next like forty minutes. Just following to, him around, trying to get the one waiting shot. for the captain to get the cup again. I bet that'd be funny just to see a video of you trying to like scoot around on the ice. Like my brother sends me pictures <laughs> if he sees. Like uh, when the Devils like advanced, he took a picture of me on the TV screen and uh -huh. sent it around, just laughing. And yeah, he, he thinks it's comical. Yeah, I mean you make it. Oh, here's the snow that you were talking about. Yeah, so yeah, yeah that that's something you that just same don't game see. You never see in the that. second period. No. So, yeah, super cool. Yeah, it was. That's the same same game, uh -huh. um, and that was kind of weird because generally the players, the champagne is in the locker room. Yeah, and um, in my following him around because he didn't have the Stanley yeah. Cup and I missed it, um, someone came out and handed him a bottle of champagne before he went back to the cup, and he just looked at me. He's like, "Ready?" And <laughs> at least he gave you like a warning. Blasted it, and I I just kneeled down on the ice and shot it with a sixteen to thirty five. And the only time I have ever shot in a locker, I shot I shot. World Series, I think it was the Red Sox when they won way back, it was like 10 years ago or something. And we went in and they were opening the champagne and Bud Lights, because I guess it's sponsored by Bud Lights. <laughs> and you prepare yourself for it as much as you can. Yeah. I have never been so sticky in my entire life. Yeah, and you know, I I wasn't going to be doing locker rooms that night. Someone else was, I was doing the on ice. And so I didn't, you know, you see guys bag their cameras and rain right. gear and all right. this other stuff. And so I wasn't ready for that. And I just got coded and I was driving home from Philly and I could only imagine if I got pulled over, like, yeah. no, listen, here's the story. I swear to God. I'm, I'm telling you, it honestly, was the, it was the championships, right? As they and called me off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, and then lastly, uh, go through some, uh, quick photos of some football, football and soccer, which is also football in other lands. Yes. Um, that's an HBO one. That's a portrait of Jameis Winston, and we—he was great. He gave us like two and a half hours time to just kind of play around yeah. for TV and me to do stills and yeah, yeah. So one very of my very cool. few portraits. And then soccer usually takes place in Giant Stadium or something. Is yeah, that what that that's was? generally like a, what. Yeah, that's at yeah. Yeah, they, exactly they have different is. matches going on. I think even Barcelona. It was Barcelona, or was it maybe Madrid? Played there. The I've soccer. shot. I've shot. Portugal there. Or I've done Brazil there. Um, I know I shot uh, Beckham there once. I did when he was on LA Galaxy. Okay, that was the only time I shot soccer. I did Messi there. It was pretty good. I I don't shoot a lot of soccer. Messi's the um, real deal. Yeah, it was <laughs> great. I was doing like uh, I had to do advertising. I wasn't even shooting the game, but I was able to go. 
I could go to the benches and I could do, and he missed a penalty kick, and I have this great shot, which never went out anywhere, yeah. of him leaning there like. Yeah. I don't, oh, this I don't, is a beautiful shot of Brady. Yeah, that was from like I don't know, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, when they played the Jets last. Oh, okay. Yeah, so a nice recent him just kind of walking out. I want, uh, They're going to be in the, what do you call it again? Yeah, Super again. Bowl. Yeah, that game again. That game. It's like, it's basically like their game. They yeah. just invite another team <laughs> yeah. to play it now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a crazy hairdo. That's a great detail. Yeah, that was also this this season. It was um, it was nice. The light was gorgeous. The light, yeah. you know, it's like when you get to a game like that, and you, it's like that winter light, long shadows, and right. Um, so I end up, I did that, and then I went up top, and I actually I didn't shoot field level the first quarter uh-huh. because it was just this really nice strips of light across, and yeah. you get to play with it. And yeah. It, yeah, it was nice. Um, you know, I've I went to one Rutgers game and they have I remember getting a great light shot, Some, something similar to this, but it was a you know different sort of lighting. But yeah, you can really get those when you're at the other end of the stadium. What do you typically bring with you when you shoot a? Because obviously lo- some long glass. Do you have a something? I you do. You, um, you know, I don't. I don't even own a four hundred um, because I don't really need it you don't shoot enough of these games i don't to justify it i have a 300 because when i shoot hockey which i shoot a lot of and i shoot elevated a 300 is perfect you can shoot both ends of the ice from the tv stand and um so you know i'll use a 300 and i'll put a converter on it yeah um canon from time to time will loan me out some stuff to use for a season well i mean if you're a cps member you can if you are you can um when yes. you evaluate uh, I do. lenses. I evaluate quite often. I like to evaluate. I'd like to evaluate your lens today. Yes, I evaluate the 400 quite often. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll use that. They're, they're, Canon's great to me. Canon.cp, something like yeah. that, .com. <laughs> we we're going to show really a little video me. of you, by the way, at the end of this, like a little 30-second piece that we made on you um, back when we... Uh, That's interesting. Um, this is called Gaelic football. Uh-huh. And I got a call from an Irish wire service um, who knew me through boxing. And they're like, hey, can you shoot this event? And uh, it's in the Bronx. Oh, really? And, yes. It's, oh, I see the train. It's, I didn't yeah. Know. And uh, so, it, and everyone's like, wow, you got this train. But the train doesn't move. It's actually it's there. Actually it just, just stays there. there. Yeah. Um, Great time. So it's Gaelic <laughs> Park in, in, in the Bronx. And uh, they do this. It's the first weekend in May. Mm-hmm. And a team the champion from Ireland yeah, comes right. over and plays this New York club. And it's the same assignment every year. Shoot the game. And if New York ever wins, it's the biggest story ever over right. here. So you got to get it. Right. And uh, so I get to shoot this once a year and it's so much fun. It's just this big party and right. of, of Irish and they're cooking and nice. drinking and having a great time. And I, I more often than not, there's a big fight that weekend that oh, I have really? to go to. Oh, so or, I, yeah, I end up, shoot, yeah, peddling it off to someone else but i love that event nice yeah it's from the well, super bowl um so okay yeah. good so we finished this this gallery up so i guess um oh we never actually finished uh, i asked you a question and then i totally just um i probably sidetracked you i sidetracked you actually i asked you if you've ever thought about doing like set work or or even oh. would that be something that you would be interested in doing or is yeah, it just not you your know, bag I, I wouldn't say it's not in my bag i mean look I'll, you can shoot it yeah yeah it's um you know i like doing kind of documentary style stuff i like i don't get to do a lot of it like boxing the dressing room stuff i love doing the behind the scenes that's my or, favorite stuff to do. yeah I, I i like it a lot and i don't get to do a lot of it um you know i i did a thing for espn where i followed a fighter around all of fight week mm-hmm. and i had more fun doing that assignment because it's different mm-hmm. and you get to kind of see what's going on and you know if you can convey what they're going through to the the, the end viewer mm-hmm. you know you've kind of done your job yeah. and you get these different moments that when i was growing up as a fan you didn't see that stuff at all mm-hmm. so you, unless you're involved in it you don't get to see it so it's kind of it's kind of fun to do that um so i would definitely do it i got asked once by hbo to um to do one of their shows but it was an emergency can you go out for two weeks and it was a really big hbo show and uh but you had to be part of the union and right things like that and i was not and to to go through the cost and everything else to maybe do some work yeah you know if you were going to get a fair amount of it then yeah then i would definitely do it but yeah um so i want to quickly talk with you about marketing and whatnot uh so this is your 
let's see here. This is your blog, actually. But here's your website, right? Here's one of those gory photos, yes. right? Uh, you got a blog and archives, recent, your Instagram. Yeah, which um, I, yeah. Here, let me enlarge that a bit. I don't know why it was so small. Um, so, how... Let's see here. What do you got in terms of followers? You almost got 10,000 followers. Close. So 200 and some more followers, you can start swiping up for your... I can, uh, yeah. That's what I'm going for as well. I'm, 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 <laughs> I, I just got one closer. That's <laughs> one good closer, to see. nice. Um, <laughs> so have you found that using Instagram has gotten you any work ever? Or is um, it... Like, how do, you, how do you use it just as a... To show what you're up to? I, I do. I mean, I probably use it a little bit. I mean, a lot of photographers will only put their stuff on it. Um, I, I mix in my my kids on it. I mix in. And, you know, look, I find a, a lot of times that, you know, editors look at stuff, but they also want to see what kind of person they're. they're do they want to see something? I don't know if they eating? necessarily want to see what I'm eating. But, you know, when I cook a really good meal, though, like, <laughs> that yeah, looks really good. I'm going to show off. I made those. So. When there's clams involved. Yeah, I or, made those. So that's yeah. I'm, I'm proud of that. But, you know, I my son is is on there. And, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, so, you know, he's. Well, what's interesting is I've talked to a lot of photographers lately who have said that editors now want to. There's that light I was talking about. Oh, that beautiful light. Yeah. yeah. A lot of, here, let's open this one up. Um, a lot of editors these days don't look at websites. They just go to your Instagram. Is yeah, what I'm told. and I, I think so. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't think an editor necessarily wants to see, you know, my kid playing hockey or my daughter dancing or, right. you know, um, or what I'm eating on a particular night. Um, but I, I just, one, I don't think I really have the time to do a personal account. Right. And, and, and this, and, uh, you know, look, I, that was, <laughs> that's actually... Which go, one? Go, there yeah. you go. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Al Bello. So <laughs> it was fantastic. And I just. One of my favorite people in the industry. Yeah, he's great. He, a Getty uh, staff sports photographer for, for many, many years. Yeah. Like uh, he, second fight I ever shot, he was next to me on the ring. And I was kind of like, I mean, I saw his photos all the time. And he shoots like, all, all, everything. all sports. He's yeah. really amazing with doing underwater photography fantastic. for swimming and, yeah. and things like and that. Just, and yeah, that was a couple of weeks ago at the, at the garden. So yeah. Yeah. So I put Al on my. Very too, cool. But, Very cool. Um, yeah, stuff that goes on in a boxing match. Cool. Uh, so th th this is a place where people can come and see the stuff that's going on around you. Recent, recent, yeah, recent work. Yeah, recent that may work. Or may not I, I just think it's easier. I mean, for an editor, I think it's easier to see someone's recent work on something like that. And I probably use I use this more than any other, you know, social media. Um, it, I think it gets your work out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have to deal with a little bit of my personal stuff, then so, uh, so be it. Damon Gonzalez. He obviously yeah. wasn't watching earlier. He says that your first botching ma Max shooting uh, photography was Don King card in Reading, Pennsylvania. Or that yeah, is, yeah, that is true. <laughs> That's cool. We that were talking true. about that earlier. I'll have to check check that Absolutely. out. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, and you know it was funny. My first Sports Illustrated photo came from that night, and it was shot with an Olympus like C forty forty point and shoot um, digital camera. Wow. Is my first Sports Illustrated photo because I went to the press conference uh -huh. and. <laughs> This uh, Nicaraguan fighter had won the title, mm -hmm. and he came to the podium, and he took out a Budweiser and a cigarette and started smoking at the podium, holding this up, and I wasn't shooting it. And I had this camera, and I just, like, Bloop. click, and nobody else apparently was shooting it. So, nice. Uh, yeah. Perfect. So that landed me in Sports Illustrated, which was kind of funny. So we've gone over all sorts of stuff, looked at all your photos. Um, you know, what's the next, like, now that HBO, uh, the faucet has closed on hbo the yeah. new one new ones opened with the new company that you're working with yeah matchroom uh boxing's been great to me so far and Is it's there... a great crew and um you know i think they're it's nice they're doing a lot of fights so i i think it's going to be exciting and as much as i like hbo became a family you know yeah. you travel with the same people week yeah. in and week out um but at the same time, it's it's something new. Yeah, it kind of recharges you a little bit. And you know what I found is is you may have heard this this before, but when one door shuts, another one right. But but the other thing is is like when people end up leaving too. These editors that are there, they'll know that they can hire you for other things. Yeah. They might end up leaving and going somewhere else, and you end up p picking up a new client. It, 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 it does happen. It's I part mean, of the business. For as big as the business is, it's a pretty small business. Yeah. I mean, everybody, you know, people know each other. I mean, I'm in a small segment of the business. Right. So, yeah, it, it happens. You get calls from people in your past. And, I mean, that's I, – I tell a lot of, like – 
I hire a lot of assistants and a lot of, you know, photographers to second shoot and things like that. And, um, you know, it's, it's, you have to produce very good work, but you also have to be really easy to work with. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that's equally as No important. one wants to work with a jerk, no. period. I mean, that's just the way it no. is. You know, it's uh, be easy to work with and, you know, obviously you have to produce good work, but mm -hmm. consistency is more, especially in sports. Um, you know, a lot of photographers will get that one epic photo and it's great, but you just, you have to have a consistency. Right. You have to go to every sporting event and produce, you know, quality work. Yeah. And if you do that, you know, somebody's going to find you and somebody's going to take a chance on you. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Um, okay. And then, so folks can find you. It's, it's your website is Ed Mulholland. Uh, your, your, this is your Moles. Moles 96. Moles 96. Yeah, is Moles your, was uh, a nickname from Mulholland. I see. If anyone wants to get you there. Obviously, on your uh, website here, yeah, some at stuff. Dot com and, and then uh, you got a blog and stuff. I don't know how much I haven't you updated do. my blog in yeah. ages. No one blogs anymore, man. Ages. That's just the way it is. I used to do it all the time, and it'd be like I shoot an event and I write about it and put stuff up, and and yeah. then as social now, media now it's becomes, just like Instagram. There right, we go. As social media became more, pro and and then I also started like, who really cares about what I what I what I. <laughs> think about a certain sporting event I just shot. I mean, yeah. like, you know, if you really care, someone will, will write, you know, I'll get an email from someone, hey, how'd you do this? Or yeah. how'd you do that? And, you know, which I will gladly answer all the time, but I, I wish Ed, you know. Ed's phone number is? No, yes, exactly. <laughs> which you could probably find on my it's website. Probably, so, it's probably yeah, like right can, here in front of yeah, us right it's, now. Um, okay, Ed, is there anything else that I missed that we wanted to, to have a brief chat about? Or is... Oh, the video, that's right. Oh, the Thank video. You. Yeah, we can pop the... I was kind of hoping we'd miss that one. No, <laughs> This is only for a quick second, but there's yes, no... Yes, that's me without oops. my hat, which is very rare. Uh, this was And a, I did have it, and I took it off. This was for... We made it for Canon. It was a little um, um, quick thing about uh, Canon Professional Services, which we're both members of, and, yeah. and it's talking about... They have saved me several we had this times. Long, we had this long uh, sort of interview with you asking you all sorts of questions, and it ended up being like... 15, 20 seconds of a, of a clip. Yeah, there's like 12 questions or yeah. like going over all this stuff and we cut it, yeah, it's 30 seconds. We had to like stand you on a box and everything. We, that was good. We did, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes. I had to stand on a box so I could fit into the frame. Yeah, and, uh, so you fit into the frame. So I could fit into the frame. <laughs> Otherwise it would have been the top of my head. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm not a very tall person, which is actually a problem sometimes. I stand on my, I literally stand on a Pelican case sometimes at ringside. Well, I was going to say one other thing yeah. about height is that you and Lifer are, what, the same height, I'd say. So Probably, it's like, yeah. you know, if, I guess that's the key for being a great boxing Maybe. photographer. Maybe. I mean, I but it's, it's, it's funny. Like, a lot of guys, it's, it's actually, a lot of guys like to shoot from the corner because you can kind of. Go each and way, yeah. I don't because I'm short and uh -huh. I can't lean around the oh, taller yeah, yeah, photographers yeah. next sure. to me. So I like to shoot in the middle next to the judge and I will sometimes actually pull out a Pelican case and stand on it, which can be humbling. I mean, Lennox Lewis, who was heavyweight champion for years, great fighter. He worked at HBO and I had to do his headshots uh -huh. and I had to stand on a folding chair because he was like <laughs> six, seven. You yeah, know? I was yeah. like, I'm up there on a chair. I've often done headshots of really, really tall people. I'm like, could you just spread your legs really wide? Just to come, just, yeah. <laughs> you know, because then if they squat, they look like they're squatting. Right. But if they put their legs real wide, yeah, they don't have brings a... them down. Yeah. Um, all right, Ed. Well, um, thank you so much. Uh, Thanks for having me. Uh, oh, we have a question. On the camera? Absolutely. Do you have to clean up your yeah, camera? Mom wants um, to know if you have to clean your camera after these fights. Yes, absolutely. Um, and in the middle of fights, you'll, you'll get blood Spatter. on the lenses, oh. blood on, yeah, it's it's everywhere. And it's... Um, Do you honestly ever worry about like it being like... Because blood is blood, dude. I, I mean, and I could imagine it getting in your mouth and... Never really thought about it I've until never really this particular <laughs> moment. No, I. You know what? I used to. I don't. I mean, like these guys have med medical tests, blood tests, everything before. Yeah, they yeah. they have to be cleared the fight. So I mean, all that's done. Oh, because that's true. Cause yeah, you, you can't put someone with no, a disease. No, they check for witness. they check for everything. Yeah. So, um, I'm not really too worried about it. I try not to really think about yeah. it too too much. But yeah, I mean, there were fights at the Garden the other night, and a guy got caught and hit and photographer next to me is like here and like hands me you know a towel and i'm like thanks you know because it was on the side of my you should take some selfies when you do when you i get should there. i should like just do maybe i'll just start doing portraits yeah, of myself exactly. with blood on me yeah. do a whole series the polaroids well with that 
thanks again to Adorama the, for letting us use your event space. Thanks again to uh, Tenba Bags, to Canon Professional Services, and of course to Ed. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for having your me. work is beautiful and Thank you. gory at, at the same time. Um, and I guess we'll see you again next time. Take care, everyone. Bye. All right.